America headquarters continues. Our American journey took us to Holland because this is about selling potato chips, but it is also about the impact of American culture on the rest of the world. It is 10 years now since Frito-Lay first came to Holland. The Dutch quite like potato chips. There was a small, successful Dutch company already making them. Frito-Lay bought the company. There is absolutely no other competitor in this marketplace which even comes close. How many millions of bags, Eugène, do we sell a week? A week, a week, six million bags a week. Frito-Lay put a Dutchman in charge. The company has never wanted to be seen as too American. Though many Dutch see a future in working for an American global company. So if I continue to be uh, successful with, uh, with my business, uh, there might be uh, another uh, opportunity within uh, Frito-Lay or within PepsiCo. The management of Frito-Lay is obsessed with control. For example, potatoes grown for Frito-Lay by farmers everywhere are grown only from the company's patented seeds. All the potatoes I grow are going to Frito-Lay. They call us the dedicated growers, and we also feel that we are dedicated to, to the company, and it should be better for the both of us. It is exactly the same way with quality control. Remember the gold standard established back in Texas? The company demands that a Frito-Lay potato chip look and feel and taste exactly the same way throughout the world. Texture is good. Even with its preference for local management, Frito-Lay makes sure that American know-how is nearby. Mike White, who's an American, oversees growth for Europe. He's worried about Holland because the Dutch just don't snack like Americans do. We're uh, heavily reliant on one consumption occasion, which is evening snacking in front of the television. Typically, the Dutch eat potato chips only at night as an after-dinner snack almost never with lunch or any other time of the day. For us, the biggest opportunity for growth is to uh, penetrate new occasions with salty snacks. Penetrating new occasions. That's company speak for getting the Dutch to do what Americans do, eat potato chips any time. But as we found on the streets of Amsterdam, even if you give them away, Lays are burdened by some people's image of America. I think that in America they discovered junk food. <laughs> it's well known about that junk food. And you've got McDonald's and Burger King and everything. You've got it everywhere. That's what, uh, what I think of America. That's very much uh, junk food and very fat food and very obese people and stuff. That's what you see on television. So. And I don't think that that's here. So we don't eat uh, chips a lot? No. Why not? Well, because it's greasy, and uh, so you have to, uh, to be aware of the calories it uh, contains. I'm not going to buy it myself. So where do we go from here? That's a good question. Because you're still not eating anywhere near enough potato chips. No, no, absolutely not. When we uh, compare uh, the per-person uh, consumption here in Holland, Mike, yep. with, um, with the U.S., Actually, uh, we, uh, we eat only half uh, the total amount that the people in the U.S. eat uh, of potato chips. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do from here is to change the eating habits of a country. Could we get our product into the schools? Yes, we, uh, we have our product in, uh, in high schools here in Holland, mm -hmm. but we need to double, triple, quadruple our visibility mm -hmm. and the number of bags that we have in this outlet. That conversation certainly got our attention. Back home, many people are trying to get potato chips out of the schools. Here in Holland, schools are an acceptable marketplace, and for Frito-Lay, a crucial one. The company's research shows that children are driving Frito-Lay's growth. At headquarters, we asked the boss about that. Do you take it as a great challenge to change the cultural habits of a nation? The eating habits of uh, just consumption habits um, are part of our ability to succeed. I mean, in countries where, where the potato chip or snacking in salty snack form is, is not well known, we can't succeed if we don't change those. Now, you know as well as I do, there are people out there hearing this and saying, that's the instinctive imperial nature of America. 
America wants to change us all to be like them. We're not trying to import a product that is made in the United States and ship it in to another country. We're making products in those countries. We're adapting it to the taste in those countries and building businesses, employing people, and changing lives. Frito-Lay executives like to point to the jobs they bring to a country. They do not like to debate how selling potato chips affects the local diet and culture. Their focus is on gaining what they call stomach share. For some of Eugene Willemson's neighbors, that has slightly grotesque implications. In Florida, we, we saw a fat man. I never saw a fat man so big. And, and uh, I got my video camera with me, and I, I make a shot from him to show in Holland from, look how big they are. Uh, I was uh, filming that man, my wife on set said to me, uh, look uh, two meters to the left, uh, there's another one, and another one, and another one. So uh, we have filmed uh, 20 or 30 seconds, and we saw seven or eight people. They were, they were yeah, it was amazing. They were, they were so fat, I think. Wow. Oh, that's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Per capita consumption is growing everywhere in the world, and it's growing at a pretty healthy clip. Uh, everywhere in the world. And what's important is that it continues to grow. Potato chips are a snack for the world. Frito-Lay needs the European market, but the company knows that is not where the real growth lies. When we come back, the newest frontier, 